Have you ever been in a heated argument, feeling like you're about to explode? We've all been there, whether it's a disagreement in the office, a fight with a loved one, or a heated debate online. But what if I told you there was a way to navigate conflict without using fists, figuratively or literally? The ancient Stoics, masters of emotional control and reason, have incredible strategies for facing your enemy with grace and poise. In this video, you'll discover 13 Stoic-inspired techniques to tackle conflict head-on, drawn from the wisdom of great thinkers like Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius. Trust me, these methods may require more patience and effort than throwing punches, but the rewards, inner peace, long-lasting solutions, and potentially transformed relationships are well worth the effort. So, are you ready to learn how to navigate conflict like a true Stoic? Remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see all of the videos on facing life's challenges with the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. Remember, your most significant victory lies not in external battles, but in mastering your mind and heart. Number 1. Delve into the depths of your adversary. Say you are at the edge of a furious river, the rapids foaming and churning with rage. A prudent Stoic would stop before diving in, and his eyes focused on the invisible depths below rather than the churning surface. Entering your opponent's mind is the crux of the first Stoic tactic, to put it metaphorically. The intensity of the situation makes it tempting to act quickly. However, Proper comprehension requires putting aside judgment and looking above the apparent surface of the issue, as Epictetus reminds us when he says, it is not the event itself that troubles us, but our view of it. Here's how to start this examination of Stoicism, the benefits of releasing. Step away from the present, inhale deeply, mentally pan out, and examine the circumstances with dispassionate interest. Put yourself as a fly on the wall and observe the exchange objectively. This emotional separation enables more in-depth observation and more logical reasoning. Investigate their why. Pose sincere queries. Rather than coming up with counter-arguments, concentrate on learning the why underlying their statements and behaviors. What drives them? What worries them? And what do they want? What life events have influenced their viewpoint? Important insights can be gleaned by asking open-ended questions such as what brought you to this point? Or what are your underlying concerns? Examine through their lens. Not agreement, but empathy. Try to put yourself in their position to comprehend their perspective, not to support their behavior. How might they perceive the circumstances? What principles and convictions motivate them? This activity aims to develop empathy, discover possible points of agreement, and experience the world through their eyes rather than agree with them. Look for the secret riverbed. Examine what's beneath the surface. Conflict frequently results from deeper problems like unfulfilled desires, fears, or injuries from the past. Consider looking past the current argument and pinpointing the underlying issues causing the conflict. What wants need to be fulfilled? Which fears are surfacing? Recall that this is a search for understanding rather than approving their behavior. Your objective is to comprehend the layers of experience and perspective that influence the acts of your opponent, just like a geologist studies the layers of rock to understand the terrain. You can find undiscovered common ground by practicing this stoic depth-seeking technique, and you might also learn important things about yourself and your responses. The once raging river will become a calmer stream with understanding and potential resolution engraved in its stones. Number two, choose your battles wisely. Disagreements abound in life, ranging from political arguments to arguments in parking lots. However, as the Stoics tell us, only some stones in the path require our whole focus. 
getting involved in every dispute, no matter how minor, can wear us out emotionally. Thus, the second Stoic tactic urges us to pick our battles carefully. Picture yourself in front of a vast battleground. Every argument and point of contention has the potential to become a conflict. A prudent Stoic would pause, evaluating each terrain carefully before leaping into the fight. Is the battle worth it in this skirmish? Will it affect my health or the essential things to me? The following tenets of Stoic philosophy will assist you in selecting your battles. The Seneca test. Pause and consider. Consider. Seneca's wise words, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. Remind yourself of the importance of pausing. Take a moment to calm down before responding automatically. Take a step back and evaluate the circumstances objectively. It's common for the heat of the moment to warp our perception, making prudent decisions challenging. Is the Epictetus inquiry still important? Consider the following crucial question for yourself. It is not the event itself that troublous us, but our view of it, Epictetus said. Is there a genuine impact this debate is having on your morals, well-being, or something important in your life? Or is it just a tiny irritation, a stone in the road instead of a mountain to be conquered? By concentrating your efforts on genuinely significant matters, you can address them with greater effectiveness and focus. The Marcus Aurelius principle, quiet can be beneficial at times. Acknowledge the power of letting go. Not deciding at all is often the best course of action. According to Marcus Aurelius, it is often enough to hold your tongue and let things pass simply. Ignoring small slights or deciding against getting into pointless arguments can be incredibly self-controlling ways to maintain your inner calm. The Cost-Benefit Analysis of Stoicism Analyze the advantages and disadvantages. Every conflict has a price regarding mental effort and possible outcomes. Compare the likely emotional costs of losing the disagreement with the potential rewards of winning. Is the cost of triumph justified? The purest kind of strength is sometimes knowing when to give up with dignity. Recall, selecting your battles strategically does not imply weakness or indifference. It's about realizing how limited your time and energy are and using them wisely. By applying this stoic knowledge, you may navigate life's battlefield more focused and save your strength for the moments that matter. Number three, speak with calm and clarity. Imagine yourself facing your opponent with your words prepared for war rather than your weapons drawn. However, the stoic approach emphasizes calm clarity, which opens the door to a more constructive discourse instead of shouting insults and accusations. This tactic, which draws from the insight of stoic thinkers such as Seneca, is centered on adequately expressing your demands and concerns to promote understanding and reduce hostility. The following are the main components of communication that draw inspiration from Stoicism. Develop your active listening skills. Go beyond simply waiting to speak. Pay close attention to what your opponent says before offering your own. Please pay close attention to them, both with words and body language. Don't interrupt, nod intelligently, and maintain eye contact. This shows that you appreciate them and understand what they're saying. Respect their emotions and validate their experiences. Empathy, not agreement. Respect their feelings and experiences, even if you disagree. Statements like, I understand you're feeling frustrated, or it sounds like this situation is important to you, can help establish rapport and connect. Raise any concerns. You may have with I statements. Consider your viewpoint instead of placing blame. Use I words to communicate your needs and feelings rather than critical you statements. You always do this. Examples of such statements include I need to feel respected in this situation 
and I feel hurt when you. This lessens defensiveness and promotes a more team-oriented approach to problem solving. Speak firmly and calmly rather than aggressively. Control, not noise, makes one strong. Speak up to ensure you understand, not because you're angry. Maintain a composed tone while speaking with strength and assurance. Steer clear of insults and personal assaults. They will only make the issue worse. Put solving problems first, not points. Seek solutions rather than victories. Remember that the objective is to devise a solution that benefits both of you, not to win the disagreement. Start the discussion with a question like, what can we do to address this together and center it around cooperative problem solving? And how can we reach a mutually agreeable outcome? Recall that practicing calm, clear speech is a necessary skill. If you make a mistake, don't be scared to apologize and have patience with yourself. Navigating even the most difficult tasks will get easier the more positive communication you engage in. Number four, seek the shared path. Imagine a pair of alpinists ascending seemingly distinct peaks. However, as they climb, they become aware that their respective paths converge and lead to a shared summit where understanding will shine. This metaphor is especially pertinent to the fourth tactic on our non-confrontational journey, seeking the shared road. It represents the stoic concept of oikonomia, living in harmony with the natural order. Even though disagreement frequently gives the impression that our ideals or ambitions are incompatible, the Stoics encourage us to look below the surface and discover the deeper currents that bind us. Even though they might not appear necessary at first, by concentrating on these common interests, we can create a framework for cooperation and compromise that will eventually result in a more amicable settlement. To start your stoic search for common ground, follow these steps, change perspective. From me to we, transcend individual viewpoints, recast the disagreement as a cooperative effort toward a common objective rather than a you vs me situation. Consider this, what do we both ultimately want? This change in viewpoint allows for possible points of agreement, even if they are not immediately apparent. Look for the necessities below, look below the surface. Conflicting wants are frequently the result of underlying, unfulfilled needs. Examine the needs each of you is attempting to satisfy through this conflict. It could be a need for safety, honor, or approval. Recognizing these everyday needs can foster empathy and make discovering solutions that care for them more accessible. Discover shared ideas. Our values guide our actions. Look behind the particular problem at hand and investigate the core principles that everyone possesses. Do you both appreciate honesty, justice, or decency? Shared values can act as a moral compass, pointing you toward decisions consistent with your beliefs. Begin small, gain speed. Appreciate small victories. Don't count on reaching a consensus right away on everything. Instead, concentrate on finding tiny points of agreement, regardless of how trivial they appear. These early agreements can foster confidence and momentum, making taking on more challenging problems simpler. Recall that life is a journey rather than a destination. The key is patience. It can take time to find common ground, so be patient and understanding. Recognize accomplishments, accept failures, and remember that every step toward cooperation is a step away from confrontation. You set off on a path beyond simple solutions using this stoic technique. By seeing the connections between your experiences and laying the groundwork for a more peaceful future, you look for a standard route. Remember that those who ascend together guided by the light of shared ideals and interests, will reach the height of understanding. Number five, 
appeal to their inner values. Imagine yourself before a massive oak tree, its roots firmly entwined with the soil. It will take more than just raw force to move the oak. On the other hand, a prudent Stoic would be aware of the influence of the elements, such as wind and water, which might subtly nudge something toward its ideals by whispering in its ear. This metaphor exemplifies the Stoic tactic of appealing to inner ideals, a potent instrument for skillfully and peacefully resolving disputes. We direct our attention to the rich soil of their values and ideas, rather than taking direct aim at their persona. Understanding and respecting their inner compass can produce solutions consistent with their fundamental beliefs. This will eventually result in more sincere buy-in and long-lasting agreements. To start your stoic journey towards value-driven persuasion, follow these steps. Expose the value landscape. Develop into a valuable archaeologist by conducting research before formulating your case. What principles do they adhere to? What values direct their behavior? Keep an eye on what they say and do, and note what they affirm, deny, and laud. This facilitates creating a map of their valuescape by pointing out possible connections. Close the value divide. Identify the common theme. Avoid assuming their values are completely at odds with yours. Seek out common ideals, even if they don't seem to fit the circumstances at hand. You both appreciate duty, honesty and fairness. Finding these common values acts as a link, enabling you to present your case in a way that appeals to them. Talk in their vocabulary. After you clearly understand their values, adjust your message to fit them, rather than trying to trick them. Talk in a way that expresses their interests and worries. This is telling your values in a way that is consistent with theirs, creating a sense of common ground rather than compromising your own. Don't just tell, show. Since deeds speak louder than words, show them how your solution embodies their beliefs rather than merely explaining them. Give specific instances, anecdotes or previous deeds demonstrating how your strategy embodies the essential principles. This strengthens and humanizes your case. Recall that respect is essential. Seek comprehension rather than dominance. Always be respectful and understanding during this process. Recall that your objective is to assist them in finding a solution that addresses your concerns and aligns with their values rather than to control or exert dominance over them. Using this stoic technique, you become a competent navigator instead of a warrior brandishing words, leading your adversary to a place they can genuinely believe in. Recall that fundamental transformation arises from resonance with the values that sculpt an individual's identity rather than from coercion. This strategy develops mutual respect and understanding and, in the end, opens the door to advantageous solutions for all parties. Number 6. Using Humor Wisely in Conflict Resolution Imagine yourself walking a tightrope that is stretched over a gaping hole. A mistake can send you into the depths of offence, yet humour can help you stay upright like a balancing pole. Using humour to resolve conflicts is the essence of the sixth Stoic technique, encapsulated in this nuanced metaphor. There is no denying that laughter can reduce tension and foster a more open atmosphere for discussion. A well-timed joke or playful demeanor can serve as a pressure release valve, allowing understanding to flourish and letting go of pent-up frustration. The Stoic philosopher Seneca says, A joke is a fragile thing and a jest may turn into an insult. We must use comedy with deliberate caution to fully realize its possibilities. Here are some guidelines to help you smoothly navigate the comedic tightrope. Recognize your audience. Only some find the same things funny, so consider your opponent's humor style and personality before you crack a joke. What amuses them in their opinion? 
Which subjects could be delicate? Be cautious and err on caution while making jokes, because something that plays well with one person may offend another. Seek out silent joy, not horniness, laughing at, not with. Creating a shared sense of humor is the aim, not using jokes as a tool to make fun of or denigrate your opponent. Humor that belittles oneself is frequently a safer bet since it demonstrates humility and a readiness to own up to mistakes. The timing is crucial. After reading the room, reread it. Humor can have disastrous results when misused. Before bringing in comedy, assess the situation's emotional intensity. It's better to wait until things have settled down if the tension is still muscular. Maintain calm and kindness. Keep insults and sarcasm at the door. Steer clear of jokes that make light of sensitive subjects, stereotypes, or personal assaults. Recall that building bridges, not burning them, is the aim. Comedy as an instrument, not a crutch. Please don't rely on comedy alone to end the argument. Although humor can be a helpful tool, it shouldn't replace sincere communication or dealing with critical issues. Don't expect it to be the miraculous fix. Use it sparingly to promote openness and lighten the atmosphere. Always err on the side of caution when in doubt. It's better to avoid jokes entirely to determine whether they're appropriate. Recall that it's simpler to gain trust than to regain it following an error, including comedy. Using these stoic ideas, comedy may become an effective tool for rapport building, stress relief, and opening up more excellent room for conflict resolution rather than a dangerous tightrope walk. Recall that the power of laughter is in its capacity to unite rather than divide. When used appropriately, it can turn tense situations into chances for understanding and resolution. This might shock you. Number 7. Offer Empathy Picture yourself on a rough mountain trail, staring over a gap at a fellow climber who seems to be going the other way. Their annoyance and rage crackle through the valley like a windstorm. Instead of hurling arguments across the vacuum, the stoic approach would be to descend gradually, bridge the gap, and extend an understanding hand. This is the core of the seventh strategy, the stoic principle of expressing empathy. Empathy is a valuable tool for resolving conflicts amicably, even during heated arguments. As Marcus Aurelius recommends, we can create genuine connections and open the door to a more fruitful conversation by acknowledging the other person's sentiments and validating their experiences. Here's how you develop this superpower of Stoicism. Change the perspective from me to them. See the world through their eyes. Try to comprehend the situation from their point of view rather than concentrating just on your own. What life events have influenced their emotions? What insecurities or concerns could be motivating them? This change in perspective encourages empathy and enables you to recognize their distinct reality. Pay attention to the above words. Listen to the words not spoken. It's essential to pay attention to both verbal and nonverbal cues when communicating with others. This includes things like body language, tone of voice, facial expressions, and spoken words. It is vital to comprehend the information being transmitted and react accordingly. These frequently disclose deeper feelings that their words may have obscured. Try to understand while actively listening without passing judgment. Recognize, don't pass judge. Appreciate their emotions rather than their behavior. Even if you disagree with them, let them know you are aware of and sympathetic to their feelings. I understand why this situation is important to you or it sounds like you're feeling frustrated are phrases that can significantly increase trust and decrease defensiveness. Look for the hidden pain. Find the source of the disagreement. Anger and irritation are frequently the result of deeper emotional scars. 
look into any potential sources of pain, fear, or insecurity for them. A deeper understanding makes it possible to address the underlying cause rather than simply the symptoms. It also builds empathy. Recall that gratitude is not agreement. Walk along with them, not in front of them. Showing empathy does not imply endorsing their behavior or sacrificing your moral principles. It's as simple as recognizing their viewpoint and establishing an environment encouraging sincere dialogue. You can handle the disagreement with dignity and understanding, even if you disagree. You create a bridge of understanding, rather than merely a bridge across an abyss of conflict. When you adopt this stoic concept of empathy, you put yourself in their position to connect rather than pass judgment. And there's hope for actual resolution in that connection, not only for the here and now, but also for how you deal with each other moving forward. So come down from the mountain, reach out, and give the gift of empathy. Together, you might be taken on an unexpected excursion. Number 8. Embrace the art of compromise. Imagine yourself before a massive oak tree, its branches obstinately waving in the breeze. It could take a lot of force to get the oak to bend to your will, which could hurt the tree and you. A more prudent strategy that draws from Stoic philosophy is learning the art of compromise, bending and adapting to find a way for the wind and the oak to coexist peacefully. Hard views and absolutes are rarely conducive to successful conflict resolution. Epictetus states, Seek not to have things happen as you wish, but rather wish them to happen as they do, and you will live a tranquil life. The ability to discover answers that at least partially meet your problems and those of your opponent is a sign of true power. The following is how you can practice this stoic art. Change me to we. Reframe the conflict as a cooperative endeavor. See the situation as a chance to devise a solution that works for everyone rather than as a rivalry. This change in viewpoint allows for more harmonious results and innovative approaches to problem solving. Identify common objectives, look for common ground, even if it appears obscure. Examine your shared goals in the long run and see past the current argument. Maybe you both have the same values, fairness, respect, or a productive working environment. Finding these common objectives lays the groundwork for reaching a compromise. Set priorities and have the will to let go. Only some details matter equally. Only some features of the circumstances are worth dying for. Decide what is most important and be prepared to give in on less important things. This enables you to concentrate on identifying answers that deal with your main issues. Determine the win-enough or win-win solution. Look for win-win solutions. Instead of focusing on a win for one party, try to find a solution where all parties feel their requirements are understood and somewhat met. In the long term, this lessens animosity and promotes a feeling of justice Recall that life is a journey rather than a destination. Patience and flexibility are key. Compromises are rarely a one-time thing. Be ready to review the agreement if something changes or new information becomes available. A durable compromise requires open communication and a readiness to change. Accepting the stoic art of compromise keeps your demands and principles intact. Instead, you exhibit strength, adaptability, and a dedication to coming up with solutions that work for everyone. You understand how to live in a dynamic equilibrium condition, not resistance, like the wind and the oak, which benefits everyone by bringing about a more tranquil and harmonious end. Number 9. Seek external aid without shame. Picture yourself tangled up in a thicket of thorns, the branches blocking your path as they twist and twirl. No matter how hard you try, 
advancement feels unattainable. This aggravation frequently resembles the sense of being trapped in a dispute where communication breaks down and a settlement seems impossible. However, the Stoics remind us that we are not alone, even in these situations. The ninth tactic strongly emphasizes asking for outside assistance as evidence of our dedication to forging a positive course of action rather than as a show of weakness. A mediator or counselor, for example, can serve as an impartial third party to help navigate the complex maze of conflict, just as a Stoic philosopher leads their students towards knowledge. They can offer a controlled environment for discussion, guaranteeing that each side is heard and valued. Their knowledge can be helpful. Break through the confusing communication, eliminating the emotional undergrowth. Strong emotions frequently impede our ability to communicate, making it difficult to grasp the viewpoints of others or to explain oneself clearly. By helping to untangle these emotional knots, an impartial third person can foster a more relaxed and productive conversational atmosphere. Overcoming the divide, creating a bridge of understanding, counselors and mediators are educated to recognize and help parties in conflict close their knowledge gaps. They can promote empathy and lessen defensiveness by assisting each party in seeing things from the viewpoint of the other. Encourage fruitful conversations, leading the discussion toward resolution. Competent facilitators can guide the discussion toward constructive problem solving, guaranteeing that all sides can voice their worries and cooperate to find answers. Offer resources and methods, getting you ready for the journey. Many counselors and mediators have received specialized training in conflict resolution and communication methods. In the long run, they can help you build stronger relationships by providing you with the skills and techniques you need to handle conflicts in the future. Recall that asking for help is a strength, not a sign of weakness, but of wisdom. According to Stoic philosophy, Asking for assistance is a display of wisdom rather than weakness. It shows that you are dedicated to developing a solution that works for everyone and is prepared to invest in your development and the partnership's success. By enlisting outside assistance, you can benefit from the knowledge and expertise of others, allowing you and your opponent to successfully negotiate the complex maze of disputes and arrive at a peaceful and constructive conclusion. Recall that occasionally receiving assistance can brighten the way ahead and remind you that you are not alone, even in the most trying circumstances. Number 10. Forgiveness. Imagine yourself fastened to a massive rock, its mass pulling you downward while its jagged edges pierce your flesh. This weight, which keeps you stuck in the past and makes it difficult for you to go on, is the weight of resentment and wrath. Forgiveness, a gift to oneself, is a potent tool the Stoic philosophy offers for releasing these bonds. Neither the past nor the other person's behavior is justified by forgiveness. We are reminded by Seneca that he who is revengeful lives with a wound always open. Instead, Forgiveness is a deliberate decision to let go of the hurt feelings that keep you stuck so you can go on with more clarity and peace of mind. Here's how to start this self-liberating stoic journey. Turn the attention from them to you. Acknowledge the effect on your health. More harm results from holding on to anger and resentment than from the other person. It drains your vitality, impairs your judgment, and makes it more difficult for you to be happy and at peace. You can take back control of your mental condition and put your well-being first when you choose a forgiveness. Recognize the influence of perspective. Examine the circumstances more broadly. Forgiveness occasionally necessitates comprehending the background and intentions of the other person. This is admitting their shortcomings and vulnerabilities rather than justifying their actions. 
This change of viewpoint might increase empathy and lessen the situation's emotional impact. Let go, but remember, let go of the past, not the memories. Being forgiven does not include forgetting the past. Instead, it entails letting go of the bad feelings connected to it. Recall the lessons you've learned, but let go of the things weighing you down, like resentment and hatred. Engage in active forgiveness. Remember that forgiveness is a continuous process. Please make an effort to extend it. It's a journey that needs constant dedication. You can practice active forgiveness by consciously letting go of unfavorable feelings and thoughts whenever they surface. Techniques like journaling, mindfulness, and meditation can be helpful tools in this process. Keep in mind that forgiveness is yours, a present for you, not for them. Forgiveness is ultimately a gift you give to yourself. It frees you from the bonds of negativity and gives you more joy, calm, and emotional flexibility. Forgive yourself rather than wait for the other person to earn it. Accepting spiritual forgiveness allows you to change your present and create space for a better future rather than erase the past. You choose to walk the road of peace and self-compassion, releasing yourself from the bonds of bitterness and anger. Recall that showing forgiveness demonstrates your strength and dedication to your well-being, not weakness. Thus, exhale deeply let go of the weight, and advance into a future offering more independence and inner serenity. Number 11. Growth from Ashes of Conflict Think of a phoenix that has undergone conflict and grown stronger and wiser. The spirit of the 11th Stoic strategy, using conflict as a catalyst for personal growth, is embodied in this potent metaphor. Remember Epictetus' advice to make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as fixed and beyond your control. Through introspection and self-evaluation, you can turn disagreement into a learning opportunity and a springboard for personal growth. Here's how to start this life-changing adventure. Adopt a learning attitude. See obstacles as opportunities. Change your mindset from perceiving conflict as a bad thing to perceiving it as an opportunity to develop and learn. Be open to analyzing your actions and inadequacies and approach the situation with an open mind. Make your excavation. You were identifying identify the underlying causes. Give careful thought to how you fit into the conflict. What made you react the way you did? Which principles or convictions was the situation at odds with? Which feelings became dominant and how did they affect your actions? Sincerity is crucial in understanding your habits and triggers, so consider these questions carefully. Determine doable domains. From contemplation to implementation, don't let reflection get you down. Convert your observations into actionable suggestions for enhancement. Did you need help communicating effectively? Think about honing your active listening techniques. Were your feelings too strong? Investigate mindfulness practices to improve emotional control. Seek guidance and criticism. Learning from reliable mentors. Look for a loyal friend, therapist or mentor who can encourage your personal development and provide unbiased input. Talking to a third party about your experiences and observations might help you see things differently and promote a responsibility. Recall that growth is a procedure. The K is patience. Expect a gradual change. Personal development requires work and time. Remain dedicated to your continuous improvement. Recognize failures as teaching moments and rejoice in little accomplishments. Adopting this stoic philosophy may turn disagreement from a harmful force into a powerful catalyst for self-discovery and constructive transformation. You are restored from the ashes and emerge from them more robust, wiser, and prepared to face obstacles head-on with poise and grit. Recall that you can learn and develop. 
and that even the most trying circumstances can serve as stepping stones to becoming the finest version of yourself. Number 12. Setting Boundaries Picture yourself with the waves gently crashing at your feet as you stand on a spotless beach. But hold on, someone is invading your personal space and upsetting you. Setting boundaries and defending your well-being and inner serenity are potent tools. The 12th Stoic technique offers in this scenario, symbolizing the delicate palette of navigating interactions. It is not the event itself that troublers use, but our view of it, Epictetus reminds us. Although we have no control over what others do, we influence how we react. By defining what we will and won't tolerate, we may safeguard ourselves against negativity and promote happier relationships by establishing clear boundaries. Here's how to apply this stoic idea in practice. Understand your inner guidance. Determine your requirements and values. Consider what matters most before establishing boundaries. Which actions are consistent with your values? Which behaviors make you feel low on energy or violate your personal space? Establishing these internal limits lays the groundwork for effective communication. Communicate respectfully and clearly. Words, not walls, steer clear of ambiguous statements and passive-aggressive behavior. Use I phrases to assertively and directly communicate your boundaries while concentrating on your wants and feelings. Recall that cultivating cooperation and understanding requires polite communication. The secret is consistency. Consistency is vital once you set boundaries. Be steadfast like a lighthouse. Never give in to guilt or avoid conflict by making exceptions. You gain respect from others and show yourself respect by sticking to your boundaries. Get ready for opposition. Recognize that not everyone will be amenable to your boundaries. Prepare yourself for possible resistance by politely restating your position and stressing how important it is to honor your requirements. Recall that boundaries give you power. Self-care is the key to freedom. Establishing limits is necessary to safeguard your mental and emotional health, not to be selfish. You can set an environment where you can grow by protecting your space and energy, which aligns with Seneca's goal of living with a cheerful heart and a grateful attitude. Adopting this stoic idea creates a lighthouse that leads you and others to more respect, transparent communication, and eventually happier and more satisfying relationships instead of building walls. Recall that creating boundaries gives you the power to live a life entire of inner freedom, respect, and tranquility. It's an act of self-love. Number 13. Remember, you control your reactions. Imagine yourself in a violent storm, with the waves smashing around you and the wind ripping. Although the storm's wrath is beyond your control, you can choose to handle it. This potent analogy captures the spirit of the 13th Stoic tactic. To remember that you are in charge of your responses and not the events around you. The Stoics remind us that real strength comes from dominating our inner world rather than exerting force over the outside world. Epictetus states, it is a shame for the soul to depend on the body for satisfaction. We gain inner calm despite life's storms by concentrating on our reactions, which we can control. Here's how you develop this superpower of stoicism. Determine what triggers you. Recognize your emotional terrain. Think briefly about the circumstances or activities that usually make you feel bad. Are there some phrases, deeds, or people that get under your skin? The first step in controlling these triggers is acknowledging them. Take a moment to breathe. Make room between the stimulus and the response. Decide to wait before acting on impulse. Inhale deeply and give yourself space to observe and evaluate the circumstances quietly. 
This gives you room to make deliberate decisions and keeps your emotions from controlling what you do. Shift your viewpoint. Change the perspective, not the facts. Our reactions are frequently influenced more by how we interpret situations than their actual occurrence. Examine other viewpoints and confront your automatic beliefs. Can this situation be solved? What good things are you able to concentrate on? Select your reaction carefully. React. Don't react. After you've collected yourself and adjusted your viewpoint, consider your options carefully before responding. Does it help you to react with rage or frustration? Would being composed and aggressive work better? Recall that you can exacerbate or de-escalate the situation depending on how you respond. Exercise. 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 Learning to control your reactions is a process that takes time and effort. Just like any other ability, it takes consistent practice. By experimenting with varied responses in challenging situations, you can progressively increase your emotional resilience and self-control. You do not become docile when you adopt this stoic idea. You gain strength. You learn to ride out life's storms with courage and grace, discovering inner peace in conquering your reactions rather than trying to dominate the outside world. Recall that peaceful power over your thoughts and feelings is the genuine test of strength, not control from without. Thus, maintain your composure under pressure, make intelligent decisions, and face life's storms with the steadfast poise of a stoic sage. These stoic-inspired techniques can help you turn disagreement from a place of fighting into one of learning, understanding, and inner calm. Recall that the real triumph is not about defeating your opponent, but about controlling your feelings and becoming a stronger, more confident version of yourself.